inflation is the 2022 boogeyman that the media keeps scaring us with. But now we're going to be getting monthly inflation data. Is that going to make our forecasting more accurate? Well, this week, Dr. Andrew Wilson and I discussed that. Plus, we give some evidence that maybe, now it's early tentative signs, but maybe our property markets are bottoming with more buyers actively purchasing properties and sellers being comfortable putting their properties on the market. If you want to keep up to date with what's happening in our property markets, please subscribe to our YouTube channel and click the little bell icon so we can update you every time a new show comes out. Last year, the boogeyman that the media kept scaring us with was coronavirus. Then earlier this year, it was the war in Ukraine and floods. Now that those matters don't seem to scare us as much, the media keep pulling out the inflation boogeyman. And at the moment, inflation seems to be the monster that everyone's afraid of. It's not just inflation, but also rising interest rates, which are the Reserve Bank's way of dampening inflation. But moving forward, we're going to be getting a different, more in-time look at what's happening to inflation. And that's one of the topics I want to discuss this week with Dr. Andrew Wilson, Chief Economist of My Housing Market. And we're also going to have a bit of a chat about some green shoots, some good signs about our property markets. Hi, Andrew. Yes. Uh, hi, Michael. And yeah, albeit a little early, as you suggested, but I think we mentioned last week that there were some signs that new listings were starting to rise. That's plateaued a little bit over the last week or so, but uh, nonetheless, I guess the auction results did uh, validate some uh, improvement in the market. So maybe we could say that the market is now reaching for the bottom uh, on early signs. And uh, it is, of course, the uh, second week in August now, and we would expect to see a bit more sign of life normally, uh, regardless of what's happening in the cycle because of the seasonal effects of spring coming up. And uh, maybe we are just starting to see a little bit of that coming through. But uh, yeah, I guess that'll uh, initiate a number of uh, revisiting of the, uh, the doom and gloom and the horrific forecasts of where house prices were going to end. But it is early days. And uh, we're also starting to see signs, Michael, that the inflation dragon, uh, while not beaten, is being challenged at the moment. We had uh, the data out from the US last week, and the US has really led the way with higher inflation and higher interest rates this year. And inflation was actually flat over July in the US, Michael. They measure inflation and their labour market, well, their wage data on a monthly basis. So um, they're a little bit more in tune with what's actually happening compared to Australia, which has now finally woken up and decided to do a monthly CPI measure, but still a few months away till we get that. Uh, but nonetheless, that sign that uh, the US inflation was actually flat over for the month, so it didn't move. Annual inflation is still at 8.6%. I think it was 8.6%, which is down from the 9.1% record that they had annualised over June. But when we look at it a little closer, Michael, uh, no surprise, and we can see that at the petrol pumps now, we've got uh, had a significant fall in the price of petrol in Australia. It's down to around about $1.50 a litre now down from what was about two twenty a litre at one stage. So yeah, the secret to all of this is not a secret. It's the sharp decline in the international price of oil. But I wouldn't be cheering too loudly just at the moment because there are certainly some potential upside for oil to start rising again. But of course, uh, that lower petrol price will work its way into inflation when we get the next data, which is the September quarter data. But once again, we'll sort of be a bit behind the game because that'll be covering prices over a three-month period, although ABS will be releasing its first monthly measure of the CPI. It will be correlating one with the other. Inflation is certainly not gone, but I think the most important thing here, Michael, is maybe consumers are getting just a little bit used to higher interest rates. Yes, it was very scary the first couple of months, but maybe it's just, well, you know, things are pretty good. I've got a job, my wages are rising, I've got lots of savings, and um, where's all the fear and loathing about uh, what's going to happen with higher interest rates? And maybe, again, we're just getting on with life because this is similar in all other uh, advanced economies. They all have very low unemployment rates and rising wages. I guess the doomsayers will have to throw out their ancient macroeconomic textbooks and think of something else to scare us with. Well, you're right. The Reserve Bank's trying to slow inflation by raising interest rates, but is it actually going to work? I know in reverse for almost a decade, 
the Reserve Bank try to increase inflation with its into that preferred band of two to three percent with low interest rates, but that didn't work. And now, no. Andrew, despite rising rates and, and falling consumer confidence, it seems that Aussies are still happy spending rather than stashing their cash. Sure, they may not be buying big items, but they're out getting entertainment, they're out buying yes. items for their home, uh, going to restaurants. Yep. So the Reserve Bank hasn't really stopped the spending. No, and I guess it begs the question, Michael, why did we raise interest rates in the first place? <laughs> if it's not working, it's just unfortunately adding to the push downwards of real wages. But I guess it just shows that we are still a, a prosperous society coming out of the COVID lockdowns with all that money thrown at us, with our house prices booming, we're still feeling pretty good. And once the uh, the fear factor washes over, washes through consumers, uh, we all sort of get on with business and official interest rates are at 1.85%, Michael. And the average prior to the last raising cycle was 5%. So we're still well below that. We've got high levels of savings. As I said, wages are rising. House prices are, uh, are giving us a great feel and go to our asset base, having boomed over the last couple of years. As with the rest of the world, we look to be just sort of getting on with business, not to say that there aren't challenges ahead and that inflation is not something we can really live with, but certainly it's a, another outcome that the policymakers will be pondering, but I'm not sure there'll be any sort of shame from the doomsayers. They'll just wait for their next opportunity. Well, Andrew, Australia is one of the few advanced nations that report CPI data on a quarterly basis. Uh, but now, as you started to say, uh, from October, we're going to report monthly. Do you think that's going to help produce more accurate forecasts? Well, accuracy is one thing. Timeliness is another, Michael. We need to have both. And this is what the ABS is working on to come up with a model that is uh, accurate over that monthly period. Of course, you have constraints, financial constraints from the ABS, also constraints with collecting the data. They have to make sure they get big enough measure of the components that are, make it accurate, you know, the basket of goods, et cetera, and, you know, how rents are moving. And these are important factors. Rents, building costs and fuel costs have been the main contributors to higher inflation. And we're lucky in this country that goods are leading the charge with inflation, not that that's lucky, but we don't have services rising as they are in the US. And that reflects the strong res response from wages in the US. Now we're getting our wages data out soon. That wages data will be for the, uh, yes, the June quarter. <laughs> We're heading ah. into September. So I'm not sure what use that's going to be. And it will be a three monthly snapshot of wages, the wage index. And again, I think it's, we should be also thinking about trying to get a wage index that reflects the monthly data, just as the CPI, because that's the other important factor in the inflation conundrum is how wages are rising. And uh, the US and other advanced economies have monthly they are able, to, are able to track data monthly on wage increases as well. In a moment, we're going to talk about the auction clearance rates for the weekend, and they were rising. But there were yeah. some other green shoots that you were starting to mention a moment ago about more listings. Yes. But I, it seems in some ways that we're just getting on with our lives. Yes. We've decided that, yes, there is inflation and, yes, interest rates are, are rising but buyers and sellers are getting on with their lives, Andrew. Yes, yeah, slowly but surely, Michael. But we expect that to happen anyway. We're an undersupplied nation. We still don't have the full demand drivers coming into our housing markets, such as migration. We've got a significant stimulus package for first home buyers. High rents are attracting investors. But they're yet to really overcome the full impact of the fear factor. Fair enough. Yeah, we've just started to see it. I think we we mentioned it last week that new listings look to have picked up a little bit over the previous weeks. They've settled and uh, eased slightly last week, but certainly there's there's no sign of continuing sharp fall in new listings, which would reflect ongoing trepidation from sellers potentially. Yeah, the auction markets were perhaps to some degree a surprise at the weekend, lifting to their highest level in some time. Now, of course, some of the naysayers are going to say, oh, people are putting their houses on the market because they want to get out before prices drop even further. But if we remember that most sellers are also buyers, they're actually not desperate sellers. There seem to be no mortgagee sales at the moment. People are just deciding to upsize, downsize, see change, tree change, get on with their lives, Andrew? Well, it's just excuses to cover their bases, I suppose. But this wasn't about sellers on the weekend, Michael. It was about buyers. And that's what clearance rates are telling us. We had rising auction numbers, 
and yet we had rising, sharply rising clearance rates. We're really talking Melbourne, Sydney here and Adelaide, but Brisbane and Canberra certainly went the other way with significantly lower clearance rates. But uh, yeah, look, there's no doubt Melbourne's been the, I, I guess, the steady hand in terms of what's happened over the last couple of months uh, with that negativity and higher interest rates. It's really held its own. Uh, with clearance rates around 60% for most of the past month or so. But it picked up uh, quite sharply on the weekend, as did Sydney. But we also saw some signs of higher listings coming into the market at the weekend as well. So higher listings plus a higher clearance rate has got nothing to do with desperate sellers. It's uh, people are buying at a higher rate, notwithstanding higher listing numbers. Uh, and I think perhaps you know the fact that there are fewer listings around at the moment compared to a year ago is activating those that are thinking they don't want to miss out now and more competition from buyers who are just shrugging off a lot of the negativity. I mean, this will reveal itself whether it can be consolidated over coming weekends, Michael. But this is the second upward lift in clearance rates for Sydney in the last three weekends. So it's not just a one-off. And as I said, we need to wait a couple of weekends to see if the trend is consolidating. But these were very positive early signs that we're heading towards the bottom of the market now. And at the end of the day, plus 60% clearance rates are starting to move away from the buyer's market into a balanced market environment. And uh, the other point tracking forward is we're also starting to see higher numbers of auctions coming through in Melbourne and Sydney over the next few weekends, which we would expect at this time of the year, Michael. And as I said, it doesn't really play into the narrative of uh, sellers not being wanting to engage the market. And as I said, if if they're coming into the market because they're desperate to get a sale, well, buyers aren't desperate to wait to get a lower price because those clearance rates were, as I said, for Melbourne, Sydney and Adelaide were um, really quite positive for the market and, and positive as an early sign that uh, the market's shrugging off a lot of the negativity that's been uh, infecting it over the last month or so. Now, we speak a lot about supply and demand. There's more demand coming in with the latest figures showing that visas for students and working holiday visas have picked up over the last little while, so that's good. But over the weekend, uh, the Labor Party also announced it was going to continue on with the idea of bringing in lots of skilled migrants. But they don't bring homes with them, Andrew. Where are they going to live? Governments really and our policymakers have to put their hand up here and they keep sort of delving themselves into policy positions that uh, are questionable at best. But uh, nonetheless, of course, you're right. The big issue in property markets really at the moment is uh, we don't have enough rental properties. We don't have enough rental accommodation. So you're right. They're not bringing in houses. They can bring in their skills and get some work. But uh, this is a tired old policy. It's a tired old uh, conversation in a sense. Yes, we're going to bring in skilled workers, but it's not going to really at the margin impact certainly the imbalances in our housing market and it's very difficult to match skill shortages with skills coming in and the reason we have such you know and that's fair enough in terms of wanting to get skilled workers into australia the reason we have such a low unemployment rate is because our borders were closed for the last three years and uh, we missed out on hundreds of thousands of migrants that would have been able to fill the vacancies that we have. And I'm not so sure it's the skilled vacancies that are a problem, Michael. I think it's more the unskilled jobs that uh, are struggling to find workers at the moment. So, Andrew, there's lots of data coming out in this coming week. The wages data is going to be very interesting as well. So I look forward to catching up with you next week and we'll see how the markets are behaving. Yes, Michael, we're certainly moving into some very interesting times, aren't we? On the verge of let's... Uh, perhaps consider a, uh, a spring rebound as usual. Look forward to it, Andrew. Speak soon. Thank you.